Over the last 300 episodes, Holly, we have talked about uh, a plethora of Mm -hmm. different topics. And whether it's trafficking or anxiety or suicide or jail or music or depression, we kind of just run the gamut of people who are sharing their incredible testimonies. Yeah, which I love because no two journey is the same. Uh And it doesn't matter what you're going through. There's going to be somebody who had like a similar kind of situation. But yeah, even in that, it's different. But um, our hope can all remain the same. I'm glad you mentioned the word journey because I, I do love that we get to journey through people's lives. And this week is uh, Lucia Williams. How are you? I am doing good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's we, good to have you here. Yeah, we're pretty pumped that that you said yes. Although we say that to everybody <laughs> because I think Holly and I are kind of shocked, even after all these years, that yeah. people are still like, yeah, we talked to you. Oh, I definitely. I'll definitely do it again and again. <laughs> well, give it one half hour and we will see how that goes. Um, we like to ask this guilt testing question because we never know where it's going to go. And that is, who are you and where did you come from? I, I came from... <laughs> well, the first thing that came to mind, I should not be said. Um... <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Lucia. Um, I am, I am me. I always say I'm five foot tall, but, um, uh, I'm married. I have, I'm a wife. I'm a, prof- a health professional. Um, I love music. I always say that people get tired of it, but I really, really do mm-hmm. love music. Um, I, I have music in my head all the time. I come from, I was born in West Africa, Sierra Leone, and um, to um, a dad who was uh, also Sierra Leonean and a mother who is from Zimbabwe. Hmm. Amazing. What brought you to Canada? Yeah. Oh, this is another journey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the very beginning then. <laughs> so at 18, my dad said, I think it's time, you know, maybe let's uh, send you off. Um, there was a choice of whether I would stay or go off, depending on what I wanted to do for school. So basically mm-hmm. at 18, I journeyed to the United States of America um, and I went to school in Minnesota. So my I started in Minnesota pretty much. Um, and then by the time I was done, started working, et cetera, as a dietitian. Um, hmm. And then I relocated to Canada after a few years uh, of working because also I wanted to pursue my current career, which is um, as a physician assistant. So I nice. blend everything, but I'm a PA. I work as a PA. So I feel like... Were... Oh. What? I was gonna say, I feel like Minnesota is like the training ground to then come up to Canada. I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> it, it sure is, because you know why? From Minnesota, um, well, I also lived in Jersey, but after coming to Canada, I went to the Pa, Manitoba. Mm. Okay. Do you know the Pa, Manitoba? <laughs> yes. You're, you're ready. You're getting training. Yeah. For it, and it's like. <laughs> You, you might as well how do you eat an elephant you you ate it all at one time yeah I, yeah I, I did pretty much i did at a minus 60 i sure did mm. so i i mean I, I would like to say that i'm educated but i don't think i am when it comes to i don't know a lot about uh africa west africa so what is life like growing up there well it was um it's pretty it's never a boring day you never have a down day and it's it was pretty good I mean at the same time uh there are things that don't come as easy as if you were in the western um world um Mm. but I think everyone's journey is different I keep saying journey because you all keep saying journey but everyone's uh childhood is different even being in Sierra Leone um my parents did their best to you know kind of sometimes to their best of their ability shelter us but sure. um there is everything you could think of that you hear from a developed co- a developing country but also there's the other aspect of the developing country that most people don't know um which is we don't you don't walk in the street necessarily uh, see people with flies all over themselves or that kind of thing but there is still the struggle for sure 
Yeah, I'm glad you said that because there is this misconception of any country in Africa that is almost like this savior complex that I feel North America has. Mm. And we always see the huts, we see these rudimentary um, pumps with water, which I know in the rural areas, yeah. But mm -hmm. there's yep, so yep. much more to each country. They're all mm -hmm. so unique, distinct, mm -hmm. lots of languages. And that mm -hmm. rich culture doesn't, I don't think, gets the the light shone on it as much as it should. That's true. But it's getting, it's getting much, much better, actually. Yeah. Was there worry for you? And, and I see more so just as a woman traveling to a new country. Because, I mean, as a guy, I would feel completely scared going to a new place new things new ideas and plus it's minus 60 uh how was it for you when you know at the age of 18 your dad was like okay uh where do you want to go yeah get out well, of here hey, yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> well um i think two things um there was it's not that we didn't have a choice but this was they were trying to do the best thing for myself so that's the mentality right this is the best thing for you at this point in time mm -hmm. um secondly i think i i am built that way to an extent um so when i when i have uh relatives in minnesota but the the thing how it worked is when i applied they went to uh, the university they went to is what I thought I was applying to, but I actually mm. applied to a different university further up north. I seem to like the north. Apparently. Well, I, I actually ended up being all by myself up up there. <laughs> but I mean, because it, it, to us, it's it's almost it's 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 exciting. It's an adventure, right? So. What about going back? I mean, was there thoughts of you'd get an education, mm -hmm. you'd get uh, the, you know, dietitian and all these things that you were working towards and then going back home and being with your family again? So I think a lot of us um, immigrants, when we do travel out, that is the dream to always go mm. back. Um, for some people, one thing or the other, uh, life happens. That's the thing. Life happens. Um, and then I got, I'm married, I'm married to Sierra Leone, actually, um, mm. we met here, coincidentally, but people get married, they build a life, then it, it's like you, you're in two worlds, you have one foot in one place and another, but my brother actually also eventually followed me, like a year or so, um, and he went to university in Minnesota, but then at the end, he's like, nope, I'm going back. I'm, I'm not <laughs> staying. I'm, I, yeah. I, I pursued further education. So I ended up staying much longer. And as I continue to pursue, uh, now I'm married. And But he like, nope. He, he, he said, I'm going back. I don't want to. He, he's raising, which is valid. He wanted to have his own. Um, he, he's more of an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. he wanted to do that. Um, so he went back. Um, I, I want to talk about our miracle baby and part of the reason why we're having the conversation today, but you said life happens and there's the hopes and dreams. You know, we, we all wanted the air quote, American dream, married 2.2 yeah. kids, the white picket fence, but that's not always how it happens. And so when it comes to, for you and uh, your relationship, you're married. And then was the, we want to have a million kids and we want to continue to live in Ontario. That we did have that conversation. Um, we, my husband, like, oh, sure, three or two, I'm fine with whatever. Mm. Um, and in my head, I had, I'm a planner, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I planned it like, yeah, let's do three. I think three is a good number because for us, it was just the two of us. Mm. Um, so three, adding one more was a good number. Um, but again, we there's a saying, I don't know if you guys know it, that if you want God to laugh, just tell him your plans. Yes, mm. I love that <laughs> saying. It's so true. So very true. So, I mean, then this is where we are. And we're just enjoying life as it, as it comes. For you and the educational channel that you, uh, you selected in the health industry, what drew you to, to that vocation? I love um, 
caring for people. Um, I I developed in, initially. I just loved this the medical aspect, the science, the medicine, um, and then I've discovered my gift, some of my gifts, and one of them is caring for people, is service. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the two of them together, uh, I ended, I pursued the the PA, um, the PA career, and then blending. So in my mind, um, it's the two, nutrition and medicine go together. Mm -hmm. and they, they, they have to gel together. A lot of times you don't see that happen, but they go together. So yeah. So you you have this career of and this love of uh, service and nutrition and medicine, and then you decided that you weren't busy enough, and you decided to then write a book. You wanted to become a, an author, our miracle baby, dare to believe. Why did you then decide to write the book? Um, I I actually wear a lot of hats. Um, I <laughs> love I. I, it's just because I love I love doing things that, and and trying new things. Um, but specifically for the book, we came to a place where um, medically we 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 we've we went through the process of uh, fertility treatment, um, mm. and so as we were going through that, um, I myself, my husband, you know, you start noticing things that are going on, and when you're going through this thing that's when it's almost like your eyes open and you're like, oh, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Not that you you didn't know before. I'm sure you've met you met people. I know you've heard that someone is going through fertility or mm -hmm. someone is, you know, they've been trying for children for, but when you're in it, you're like, wow, there's so many of us. Um, and I wanted to just encourage people because in that one of my, I, I would say God given gifts um, is I didn't put a word to it, but nowadays they call intuition or emotional intelligence. Like I can, I think that's what, what makes me a caregiver is mm -hmm. I could, I could sense what's happening to someone, how they're feeling. And you could see people are losing hope. So this book mm -hmm. came off of a dream. Mm -hmm. So I thought about a lady that I kind of know, and I had a dream about her and she had kids in the dream. And it wasn't just any dream. I knew it was just God speaking, but I didn't really know how to approach this lady. Like I said, I don't quite know her. We don't have these conversations. So mm -hmm. I thought, how do I get this? You know, how do I encourage people? And Holy Spirit said, book. Ah. I don't, I say this over and over, writing, I, I was never a fan of writing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why, you know, it's God. It's not, yeah. Me. yeah, I could do other things, I but not, it wasn't writing. So that's how the book came along. Did you feel, uh, so, I mean, I have friends where they look at each other, they have a baby and yes, it's just, it's that easy. I know I it's too. like, <laughs> guys, close your eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at, at what point did you feel as though okay we've we've tried we've we've exhausted all the natural mm -hmm. options we want to try something else like fertility um it was two things i think um as a medical professional the pa i see i see women i take care of pregnant women i take care of newborns infants mm -hmm. like i see i keep i see them a lot um, but the funny thing is, it never really clicked until we were like, we're going in two years. And so I'm like, oh, wait. Mm. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that at year two, you should have had a baby or year one, you should have had a baby. But I was just wondering. We, we're we really trying. We, we It's not like there's lack of effort. <laughs> 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 and so um, then it dawned on me, like, there might be something medical going on. Mm. And obviously, this is the part of the book, really, where um, I, I'm, I write about encouragement, but also just being aware that there could be medical conditions going on that are fixable mm. um, in as much as we stand in faith. So um, this is where we got to the part where, you know, let's let's make sure let's do the checkup and make sure everything is okay and we did it was fine um but yeah 
that's how we got to that place. I know when people are in that season, it can be a season where you feel guilty. What did I do? Is God mm. mad at me? Um, maybe it would be something medical. And there's almost that hope that it's not me. It's something else. Right. Uh, how did you and your husband navigate that season and just the barrage of emotions that, that follow? Um, I think, I think at the end of the day, we just have to trust God. We really mm. had to, um, you really end up drawing closer to God just to help you through. And, um, the emotions come and go. They, again, it's the second half of the book where I talk about the emotions, they come and go, but I got to a place where I'm like, this is, I'm more, I'm all, like I said, I always sing, I'm always singing and, you know, laughing and joking about, but then I got to a place where like, why am I so always serious? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Um, And then sometimes my husband and I, you know, we, we, when, when I have to say it, because it happens when the period comes, you're waiting, you have, sometimes your body plays tricks two, three days. It's like, Oh, it's delayed. And then it comes and we're like oh you know next time but then we I found that we got to that place where it became a silent um it's we don't say anything we didn't say anything we're just like it happened moving Mm -hmm. on Mm -hmm. so and if you allow that to keep going then you get into different places where you know it affects even the spouses relationships so we recognized that and then we started working through that so thank god we went past that but there are a lot of people who have never identified what's going on they just have these feelings and just keep going um and every day it's almost like someone putting a weight on you and you yeah. keep getting lower and lower and if you don't you lose hope and then you just go through life I'm glad that you actually mentioned the, the the spousal relationship because a lot of times when infertility is going on, that's not talked about mm-hmm. because it's maybe the woman who's struggling because she's doing all of these things or yeah. the guy blames himself because maybe he's not. So how was it between you and your husband as you were going through this? I think we went through all the emotions. Um I think also our personality was has never been where um, we dwell on things for too long, but we still had it where um, I'm sure we at the beginning, um, he mentioned like, I don't know, is it, is it me? Um, and then I would think, is it me? Mm-hmm. But I, we also got the reassurance when we went through fertility um, and did all these tests, everything was fine. So we're like, well, it's fine. So let's just trust God. And there are people who um, there might be things going on that then they have to work through. But yeah, it can put a strain. Um, but we we kind of check in every so often, just so we don't get in that rut. Um, I, and, and I mean, I, I haven't been through it, but I, I'm curious through your perspective on uh, something like the waiting. And I, and I feel as though the waiting would be the hardest because mm-hmm. you and your husband, two years in waiting doesn't happen. You do fertility. I don't know how long it took you for the fertility, but I'm guessing that waiting was difficult. Then you get pregnant. Then you have nine months of the waiting for that. How did you guys deal with the waiting, the waiting part? Yeah. Well, we're still waiting. Um, our fertility treatment it was about a year. We went through it. Um, we gave it about a year. Um, and then we kind of decided to just take a, a, a break. But that waiting, in that waiting, so many things happen because aside from the fact that you're blaming yourself, um, you can also get some, you could get to a place of desperation. And I talk about this in the book um, and waiting for anything. This happens, yeah. whether it's, um, you could get to a place of desperation and you end up um, and doing things that you shouldn't be doing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so as a ch- as children of God, I think we have to be aware of this. 
um, so that we don't end up putting our needs because we want this before what God wants for us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's important no matter what phase of life or what you're going through to always keep that focus in like it's about what God has in store for you, not what we want. Mm -hmm, exactly. And we are still waiting, um, but we are waiting with patience at this juncture. When it comes to and I mean, you've talked about uh, the faith side of things. When was faith a part of Did you always have a faith growing up or was it something that had happened as you got older? I grew up in a Christian home. Um, so there was an element of faith. Um, uh, my mother was a champion of it. And we as a family have gone through so many things where God has taken us through. Um, we've seen miracles happen. We've gone through so many struggles. We've had really lows, lows, and we've had really high highs. So I think as a result, we've seen the hand of God in our lives that we have faith. But everyone comes through a point where you have to decide, probably as an adult or maybe in, a younger adult or a teenager, you then have you come to that place where you question your faith. Mm -hmm. So I got to that place where I question, um, do I be is my faith just based on what my parents have taught me, or do I really believe whatever this whatever they taught me? Mm -hmm. um, and so I I went through that that walk and that built built my faith, and so my rock is unshakable by his grace. So I, I want to then, as, as you write this book, how important is it for you to mention the spiritual side of things and the journey that you're walking in? Because most people would go through it like, oh, this had happened, but yeah. it's important or the importance of you mentioning your relationship with God in your book. Life is spiritual. Everything starts and ends in the spirit realm. Um, I know we go around life, um, a lot of times you don't really think about it because, you know, natural, but life is spiritual. I've come to that place where I understand that. Mm -hmm. And in my walk and my struggles and my my gains, my uh, um, victories, I understand or I don't think you can ever understand God, but <laughs> you'll never understand yeah. God. But, but I'm closer to him to realize that I can't do anything or be anything without him. Yeah. Um, and so no matter what it is, what I do, he's still, he's always in there. And I put that in the book. Um, but I also made it clear that I'm not just talking about faith. Um, if you are not a Christian, you can also read the book. But I wanted to make it clear that honestly, if you're not, um, it's worth a try because what you can do with him by your side is so much more when you are by yourself. And sometimes the struggles that we go through, it's a journey, but when you go past that waiting stage or even through that journey, you start realizing like, oh, there was a purpose in this. Oh, there was a reason why this happened. Yeah. Um, and then you realize just how good God is. So I wanted to put put that there in the book so people know just how good God is. You talk about how your family's had faith and you've had really high highs, really low lows. At any point during that cycle, were there um, were there moments or a moment that stands out to you as a why me moment? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have um, I, I have several conversations with God. Sometimes I'm like, well, you created me this way. So. <laughs> but um, this is very true. Um, and my why me, I, 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 I mentioned that really. My everyone's why me is different, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's why me is different. My why me um, came about, um, it, there was an actual incident that happened 
like I said, I see patients, I see um, pregnant ladies, um, even during the pandemic, people, patients that I saw, they've had three kids because there was nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> so Wrong if, lockdown. If, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if you can imagine, and I'm going through like, oh, okay. But I never connected uh, to say, Oh, why are they doing? Why are they going through this? And I'm I'm not able to. That wasn't my why me. My mm-hmm. why me was I've done everything I think I could do. So what exactly what what is it that I have not done, or mm-hmm. if it's something that I've I I have to go through, what is it like? What's the mm-hmm. purpose? So that was my why me. It's like okay, what's the purpose of this happening? Why can it be just simple and straightforward and give me something else to fight about or to end by fighting about? I mean, like, you know, as a warfare prayer and all, give me something else yeah. for me to, to, be, to be purposeful in. Why is it it's this one? And I think one of the reasons why I got to that place is, like I said, I plan, I plan, I plan, I plan. I have plan A, plan B, plan C. (laughs) (laughs) And so I got to a place where there was, I couldn't do anything else. It was just about, you have to trust God in this. Mm -hmm. And this was a new place of trusting God. I have had so many different situations where I've had to trust God you can even say somewhere even harder but this was completely different completely out of my hands I was doing everything you could think of Mm -hmm. so why me in this situation yeah yeah um I want to ask a personal question and uh, you can tell me to be quiet, but I will ask it anyways, just because I think I'd be remiss if I didn't do it. Um, Where are you now with the fertility treatments and you and your husband and, you know, uh, trying to uh, create a family? We are on a pause. Um, so basically we, we went through, um, if you go through fertility treatment, there are different options, different treatments. Mm. Um, it might be as simple as just making sure you're calculating your ovulation date well. And if you do, you coordinate it, voila. Um, it might be that, um, maybe the, the tube is blocked so they can, uh, some doctors will say they have cobwebs and they remove <laughs> that's <laughs> they I guess remove... one way of looking at it <laughs> <laughs> they remove the cobweb um, it could be that the male uh, a sperm there's not enough or it doesn't have enough energy so mm. there's a procedure where they, they help to get it there um, then you have obviously in vitro etc so mm-hmm. it is really up to you and your partner your spouse but we went through so many and then we thought this is getting too consuming. Mm. It's consuming everything in our lives. Yeah. Um, time, emotion, um, and and my hormones were changing because you also there's some depending on which stage you have to take certain, you might have to take certain hormones. And mm-hmm. it was just so we thought, just take a break just take a break. So we are on a pause, but we're still trusting God because even when you're going through that, you still have to trust God that it's going to be fruitful. I, I don't want to be a jerk, but so if the (laughs) fertility thing doesn't work, have you thought about adoption? Have you thought about getting a dog? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, (laughs) no, no, I've had these questions. (laughs) Right. I'm just, you know, because I know that there's people who are listening who are like, okay, you've talked to people who've gone through infertility and they have kids. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of times we talk to somebody who's in the midst of it or hasn't had. And so there are other options. Options, And my assumption is you and your husband have had these conversations. Yeah. No, that's correct. Um, we've had these conversations. We've had people ask us these these uh, questions. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, it, it's basically what works best for 
the couple. Yeah. And I think these are not out of uh, the question for us. It's not that we don't want to. Um, I think we just got to that place where we just wanted to just pause in trying to think we need to do this to get it to to get the kids to get the yeah. children um I think that's where the dog the dog is a debate because my husband wants a cat I don't want a cat I want a dog he doesn't want a dog so I we, we haven't come to a compromise <laughs> why i brought it up yeah if you want to borrow some kids i've got two uh you can borrow them i don't know i actually borrow my friend's kids um, i love it I, I do a lot of things with the kids so i just don't sit around you know moping around i actually do a lot of things with kids yeah yeah, yeah. um you know what I, I and i will say this is that i'm i'm excited for the future for you and your husband mm. Uh, Holly and I always say to people, we'd love to have you back. We'd love to be, and we have yet to have a, a guest, you know, be a repeat. Um, whenever the next stage of life happens for you and your husband, whatever that may be, I would be very um, uh, excited to have you back on and hear kind of what that next journey is going to be. I would love to. At that time, you would, I would probably come when I'm pregnant and come with a baby. <laughs> We're hoping for twins, so I will be okay. juggling. <laughs> as long as it's not in the delivery room, I'm good. Yeah, we're good. We're Why good. Not? <laughs> <laughs> Although, good. Um, Johnny, you do have a dream to deliver. They wouldn't baby. even let me deliver my own kid. They're yeah, like, you can drop him. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's my kid. Let me drop him. Who cares? Well, <laughs> I, I, I must say Isaiah 66, 9 actually says that that um, it, will he not bring uh, you to that place and not bring to birth? So, hey, you could be there. In the, in the there you go. I needed you at that moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. L Lucia Williams dot org uh you can jump on our website book available now love uh love your heart thank you for taking some time and uh sharing it with us yes. thank you very much for having me it's my pleasure i'm just doing uh i'm just being obedient really because originally i was like i really have to go and talk about all these things but <laughs> I, I see why um i i'm getting it why the why yeah yeah Amazing. thank you well, if you enjoyed what you heard today, like, subscribe, and check out more of our YouTube videos. Don't forget to follow us on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and faithstrongtoday.com.